Let's yee this haw. There's some haws to yee. So, at the beginning of last session, you guys were finished with the uh, with the brothel of Joe's Crab Shack and decided to finally go over to your caravan and go and investigate and finally um, decide to go on your way up to Grimwatch. It was here that you met two bugbears at the outside of the wagon here who were razzing you guys and giving you guys uh, an issue. Uh, wanting you guys to get the fuck out of town. Here it was Evan decided to investigate the actual uh, caravan for... Was it explosives or a bomb? A bomb? A bomb. You were looking sure for a bomb. No bombs. And you actually found that it was quite sturdy and it was a well-built caravan driven by two ponies. Evan take, took one good lack... Uh, one uh, last good look around before he saw out of Jasper's window watching them all climb into the caravan. Jasper hopped, I mean, Evan hopped in the pat in the, the driver's seat as the rest of the party gathered into the into the caravan and decided to take up off to the to the cliffside and go into the forest. It was here that the the thickets of the forest started getting um thicker as the the density of the forest um as you guys continued up the pathway it was here that you guys found that there was a couple of these eye bites every now and then that would fly and skitter across and eat some of the lingering bugs and mosquitoes and evan thought it was kind of weird but he noticed that they were around but as you guys got deeper into the forest and a lot of the the overhang of the 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 overgrown trees started clouding some of the the moon up in the sky it was then that you guys noticed there was a couple of creatures giant eyeballs that grew limbs and a whole body were able to look at the caravan and were trying to pry into your guys's minds evan and uh roger were having none of it and Roger decided to walk along the side with the caravan as uh, Evan kept along with the ponies. You guys came to a clearing in the forest where you guys found a what seemed to be an encampment of some kind with a couple of tents put up and a smoldering fire. Uh, a few creatures uh, started lurking out of the forest and trying to dive into some of the people's minds that were inside the caravan. But not long before um, they they circled the caravan after who was it that set the uh, one of the, the the things on fire the encampments on fire me because uh, I was sh shooting at uh, one of the fire damage yeah yeah and you lit up a tent not before or, and then soon after ten of these creatures uh, came lurking out to attack the caravan. During the combat, these uh, these creatures knocked over the caravan and damaged it enough to the point that it is, seems unusable, but you guys ended up slaying all 10 of them before investigating the actual tents. It's here that you guys found a few magical items. Uh, you guys found the goggles of night and thieves gloves, I'm pretty sure, something like that. And a letter that said that... Um, Victor had started using men and children to use in the dig um, to run and never go up there, that they were trying to get away. It was here that you guys were on the pathway, walking your way up to what seems to be a village up ahead, and uh, you guys could still hear some of the skittering within the forest. You guys hadn't seen anything but uh, it seems like you are maybe about an hour's walk away. Well, onwards and upwards. The wagon is unfixable at this point. Yeah, there was uh, two attempts that you guys tried to flip it over from it being bashed mm -hmm. in, and mm -hmm. it seemed like it was uh, unsalvageable. Ah. Sorry about that. Well, if we're walking, I guess there's nothing to do but to start walking. 
I'm gonna keep casting light so that everybody can can see. How long does it last it. for? Ten minutes? The rest of them do. Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought it lasts until the spell or something. No. I'm just oh, gonna. I'm just gonna pop my glamour weave coat. The so. uh, 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 camo. Okay. No, I'm sorry. One hour. It lasts for one whole hour. There you go. So you only need to do it once. You're good. Okay, so I'm gonna put on my new fresh goggles of night. Big ass looking goggles. Did you look a picture of them? Yes, they. Yes, I did. Uh, they look hourly. <laughs> And then it was uh, Gertie who got the gloves as well, right? Yes. As you guys Somebody did else your... had them, and then they gave them to me. Your trade-offs? And I did give the Todd the medallion of thoughts. <laughs> yes, you gave him the medallion <laughs> of thoughts. Yep. Which was an interesting item that you got a little while back. Tis mine. I haven't had a really good chance to use it because I, I would have used it in the court case, but all of my items were taken. So it's like using it in the arena. Nah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, you, so you guys are just uh, leaving the encampment as you guys had slain 10 of those creatures, um, the Nothics, and I imagine you guys are going to start marching your way back through the forest. Not going to lie, I'm glad that we killed them all. They could have been spies. Then again. At least. They, they probably already know we're coming. All the ones we saw. Right. There were that many, there's probably more out here. Well, hopefully it will put up enough of a fight that uh, intimidated the rest of them. They don't try us. Yeah. I don't think those things want to wanna smoke with us. Because uh, between you, me, and the wind, uh, I'm almost out of resources here. I think it can swing a couple more times. Oh yeah, how are your characters doing from that fight? Uh, I have a second level spell slot and 20 hit points. Oh, didn't we hit level 7, you said? No, you guys were begging me for it. <laughs> <laughs> I could have swore I heard level seven. Yeah, from all of you. I years. definitely heard once we get done with this level seven. <laughs> oh yeah, if when you guys are done the manor, you guys can be level seven. Sure. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think that's what I heard. I think that's an interpretation thing. Like before we get to the manor, once we get done with the. This this manner of creature, I think, is perhaps was the full sentence. <laughs> this manner of of being. Yeah, you haven't met the creature manner perhaps. yet. You haven't met the creature the manner. I so. bug things. What about them? They were creatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they weren't the manner yeah. creature. So. Yeah, M A N N E R. Ah, uh, no, no, no. See, interpretation. Like in a manner of speaking. <laughs> A manner of creature. Well, it was my spelling, not yours. Well, what we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> what like, we have I think is... the best thing to do from here is just to just to you know go to level seven and move. What on. we have here is the D and D community <laughs> bossing up against the DM. <laughs> <laughs> Strong, a strong encouragement. That's all it is. And I'm not like Wizards of the Coast, and I'm not going to give in. So, <laughs> you... <laughs> when sixty percent of us leave, you will never. No! <laughs> well, that's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Level seven will be blocked behind a paywall. No! <laughs> a thirty dollar a month paywall. You've done it yes! now. <laughs> but don't worry, you will guarantee the level at least once per month. No. Thirty dollars. No, no, no. That is not a guarantee. That is too soon. 
I don't know. 20 it's months, you get a 20 more. level character? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's called accelerated D and D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Monetized bullshit. I purchased my way to level 20. <laughs> <laughs> the trust fund player. Yeah. I got to skip up to uh, tier three by uh, donating uh, $250. Snacks <laughs> <Yeah>. for <laughs> <Next laughs> <to> the DM. <laughs> All right. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Roger. I think, uh, after that arena, it was kind of a... You know, that was coming kind of a rough fight, but we made it through it. You're still kicking? Yeah. Those things hit me worse than anything in the arena did, actually. Oh. I don't think I got hit with anything in the arena. That was, that was weird. There was yeah. a lot of shit flying. How did I not get hit in the arena? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. That As I look at the fact that I myself am currently bleeding from the claws on those from those one-eyed monsters. Well, I've got a couple scratches, severe scratches. I could be feeling better. <laughs> no matter how much I tape this up, it's still bleeding. More tape might be a little bit deep. And how's Gertie and Gromit looking? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, really? Gromit hid yeah. in the shadows the entire time. And he was perfect. <laughs> he was playing the perfect rogue, and he was like just popping out, taking I shots. Think I only went one on one with one guy. How, in, how injured are you? Me? Yeah, I'm at half health. Okay, with. 3d4 to get you closer. Go ahead and do it. I'm going to use healing hands on you then. Okay. 3d4? You, yeah, you regain a... You regain 10 hit points. Oh, good God. I am feeling much better. Well, Roger... I'm going to slow down the pace a little bit and pat my buddy, uh, pat my buddy Todd, shoulder, and Gertie, make sure they're feeling all right. I'm going to give each of them five hit points, too, from my lay on hands. Dang, Roger, okay. Uh, yes. Well, you Thanks. know how it is for a soldier, maybe. I don't. All kinds of <laughs> scrapes and scraps get uh, get people down on the battlefield, and it's just part of a job as a team leader to help help knock those off as best as you can. Team le wait, team leader? I left my yeah, that's what I was back at the uh, Sun Chasers. Oh, I thought you were appointing yourself team leader of us. I was about to. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure, sure this guy a owns you guys. Idea. And I'm you gonna, don't I'm gonna point take over responsibility for our action. I'm gonna point over at Gromit. I'm gonna be like, well, he seems to be the one wearing the most hats, and he's got the biggest hat, so I'm pretty sure that makes him boss. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's totally the boss. He's the ringleader. Oh yeah, no, he absolutely is. <laughs> yeah, I'm a runner. I show everyone where to go. I don't go into any traps. No one gets hurt. Gromit. <laughs> Cardi just feels sick to her stomach. <laughs> Are you okay there? Okay, so... She just does that. Just a little PTSD, honey. That's all. As you guys are making your way back through the forest here, and still the trees are high and looming, you can see that it still covers a lot of the moon. As you see, like, eh, only its light glimmers through some of the branches down towards you guys. You guys can find yourselves getting to almost like a gravel road that's leading up to this encampment. It's all, It just looks like a town ahead. It looks like there's a gate out front. A small gate, not a tall gate, but it's got torches out front. You can see that just beyond, just over top of it, you can see that there's some taller buildings with some smoke coming out of some of the chimneys. 
and much further past um, the village here, you can see up on top of a cliffside is what seems to be um, Grimwatch Manor, which is off in the distance, shrouded in uh, fog. As you guys can also hear some splashing or or some like river waves hitting like the side of what could be down down on the side of the cliff is like a water or the ocean of some kind like a large body of water you can almost hear that just trickling far into the distance but it's not before the sound inside the forest where like the twigs and the sticks get moved and crunched you can hear that there's almost a rustling within the tree i'd like two people to give me a perception check Oh, Anyone else want to uh, roll it? You guys are about, I'll say, 200 feet out. Yeah, this character's huh? not great at that, so I will leave that to other people. That was caught. Um, um, I, I have a good perception. Let me double check. I, have an yeah, I do. Oh, but never mind. I do not have a good perception. That's, That's an a eight. hard pass. <laughs> I got a four plus four. Hey, hey. <laughs> Anyone else rolling? I, mean, I got a negative one, so like I can roll, but it's not that good. I, <laughs> I have a plus one. Ah. I think I. Oh well, you know what? I actually have a plus four. I'll roll. <laughs> you know what? I can. I can do this with a plus four. Let's see how I do. Gromit had a plus four. Seven. I had a plus four. I rolled a four. <laughs> Oh boy, I should take a shot. That's what I need to do right now. Just shoot your shot. Uh, I got a nat one plus four. <laughs> Die, yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh god. Yep. So just we're starting up strong. It's time. Yep. The the conversation the conversation within the party is strong. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else happening around all the rustling within the trees seems to be seems to be like a, a just 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 noise in the background but with a nat one you see that evan he's like had his head turned talking to roger before he locks his foot into a rock on the ground trips over lands on his face here Oof. ah <laughs> Ow. Damn, you right you no this is not going good what the hell did i trip over <laughs> evan you ask that question you rub your head really quick you look back and there is a large, like a like a long rock, but what seems to be is like there's a there's a hand, but not a, not like a physical hand. There's one hand completely made out of stone down a forearm that leads into a bush, but it is completely made of stone. Um, what I'd like to investigate that? that hand. Okay, give me an investigation check on the bush and the hand. Did I just trip over a statue? Maybe. That looks like a statue. How the hell would anybody have a statue oh. here? <laughs> Why is there one in the bush? That's that a seven. You uh, start rustling some of the, the bush away, and some of the thorns within the bush start catching like on your arm and start to rip ah. at some of your uh, sleeve. Son of a bitch. You notice that there is more to this like rock formation that goes down into the bush, though. You're just not able to get at it. The the bush is too thorny. Check. Hey, Grandma, you've got little hands, right? Can I yeah. do an investigation check? Sure. Uh, that would be a... 25. No problem. I... I'm I'm really surprised that nobody said I'm just gonna burn that bush, but yep. Nope. <laughs> That's I'm called character that. growth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh Evan, maybe you get some of your tools out and start like prying some of the bush away, and you can see as the arm leads into the upper arm, into the shoulder, you can see that it turns into a torso, and you can see that this is one of those Nothic creatures completely turned into stone. Hey, uh... Yeah, that doesn't bode well. This is quite creepy. The fact that that thing 
it almost it looks already like already creepy in its last moment its mouth is like jarred open like as if it was screeching yeah they don't carve statues of scared things what are you implying i'm implying something made it into a statue things can do, do that there's no way i mean why not you can shoot fire out of your hands and, like, I have a glowing icicle brick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, how do we I avoid heard. being turned to stone? I don't want to be turned I have to no stone. idea. Somebody do, like, an arcana check on it? I, I don't know. I mean, the DM didn't call for it, so... The hell's an arcana? Go off as if my character has no idea what the fuck they're talking about. And that being said, he is on full alert. He, he's like now moving at like half pace worried about the unfortunate side effect of petrification oh perfect so you're going from a nat 1 to re-rolling a perception check for me <laughs> nat 20 I mean plus hey. 1 Evan, now after, that's character development <laughs> there's character growth yeah Evan, after finding out that a Nothic has been completely like turned into stone here, you can look beside it, and within um, more of the bush, you can see that there's a small pile of dust along with it. You can see that down the trail into the forest, there seems to be like a large scorch mark where something may have been standing, but it there's just it's just like the scorch mark into the earth. You look around the forest and begin to see like some of the top bits of the, like the branches move. Something isn't leaping between the branches. You can see almost like a fully developed, like an eye bite turned into a gigantic size, but no longer with wings, but with tentacles roaming throughout the branches deep within the forest though. Is it in the direction that we're going? No, it's just deep within the forest. Okay. I'm just going to look at... Guys, uh, let's be very considerate that we are definitely not the top of the food chain around here. Um, I just think I saw something that was rather large compared to our petrified friend up there. And... Uh, I don't want to tussle with it, especially if we plan on trying to take the picture today, where we don't have, I, I don't have it in me. So what you thinking, sneaky sneak? With every bit of our, every fiber of our body, we need to be sneaky on this. Heck. And Fair. That's hard for me. Yeah, I can do that. Roger says as he stands up and like just breaks an arm off the statue by accident. Oh, that's not an eye bite. <laughs> it's a little overdeveloped. That's not an eye bite. Like, come on. Come on. Come on what? We know what that is. I'm, I'm just saying I that's what Evan sees. For my life. What Far off into the distance. It's got multiple eyes and a toothy maw and an angry look as if like it just found out it got caught not paying its taxes for the last 20 years and it's goldfish died <laughs> naturally <sighs> but it's far off in the distance it's something that you can monitor and you can notice that it's like it's just out there it's something that roams inside the forest where it doesn't seem like these eye bites only develop into these noth nothics, it's like they develop into all types of different creatures, depending on how long they can evolve. That's scary. Let's uh, continue on before uh, I get any more jaw dropping, whatever you want to say. I can't even think of words right now, I'm so lost. Revelations? Sure, Roger. Sure. Just continue on. Okay. You guys were about 200 feet away from 
the the outside of town there to the gates and as you can guys continue to make your way up you see some more of these familiar looking um bits of rubble where it's like it it, it could be like the something was turned into a statue and then destroyed where like it's got the crumblements of its of its remains you can see that there's a bunch of little bits of ashes here and there where um which were very familiar to the other ashes that you found near the other body you guys uh, are roughly about a hundred feet away from the encampment and it's here that it becomes more into like a like a clearing where the forest chops away and you're finally at like level ground i wouldn't walk directly out into a clearing i would definitely scout from the outside like it's from the edge of the forest and look at the clearing and do as much as like a uh, a rundown of all the open terrain before i put it into it okay i'm just having a little bit of a hard time hearing you i don't know if that's just oh that's probably because I, I don't know I'm, i don't know is that any better a <laughs> little bit uh is it a setting maybe no but okay uh, does anybody want to scout with perception or investigation towards mm. the the open land? I'll do an uh, investigation check. Sure. Uh, 15. Okay. The major thing that you can tell here is that there's footprints and wagon wheels that lead in and out of town. It doesn't mm. seem like there's a manner of other types of footprints or creatures that seem to uh, go up towards the uh, the town here or go back or the encampment okay well and then so there's the town and the manor is like on a hill up up on the outskirts of the other side of the town i'm assuming yes okay that's what i thought all right yeah uh well what do you guys think i think yes, yes. Gertie's like got her crossbow at the ready after seeing all of these like stone thing stone corpses essentially scattered all over the damn place. Like she's terrified of the of whatever the fuck did this and is like at the ready. I'm like shoot. holding out my lantern, looking around. And by lantern I do mean brick. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. And and I'm just like, whatever made these. It doesn't go very far. Mm. You can see these out in the forest. And we only ran into one on the way here. Now there's a lot. Um, Territorial, maybe? I just want to get out of its potential hunting grounds if we can. Same. Let's find, let's find a place to hold well. We head see toward we the village. Yeah, let's see if we can find some kind of makeshift like shelter and set up some kind of staging ground before we make our attack. Sounds good. Okay. You guys enter into the clearing and make your way pretty much all the way up to the the front gates. You can see that they're about 15 feet high and pallets of wood that cross each other. And you can see that they would almost split open um, to welcome you guys, but not before you can see like a little latch comes across to the side. As you can see, a woman is there and she goes, Hello, who are the bunch of you? We saying you come out the forest. What's your business? What's your business? <laughs> Ass whooping. What? I just look at Also and preaching say, the good lore uh good word of our Lord and Savior Lathander. Kinda looks but back mostly the ass part. Kinda looks back and she's like and then looks back again. <laughs> I just simply say Lathander's a good god. Praise be with Lathander. Lathander's the greatest god. <laughs> We had a carriage, well, with some goods and such, but unfortunately it was wrecked on the way here, so now we're seeking some type of inn or tavern or something for some shelter for potentially the night. 
Well, lucky for you, we are having a little bit of a gathering. Open the gates. You can hear like a couple of like the, the blocks of wood come away as the gates open uh, open outwards towards you guys. And you guys can see that there's a township. I sent like a photo of what it looks like. Just kind of like what uh, Ron was asking for where you could see like the manors in the far distance. But like this is kind of what you guys see. You can see that there's a couple of structured buildings. You can see like a couple of chimneys have smoke coming out of the top of them. There's like a, a bit of the center of like the street center of town. And there's a, a, no, a good number of people here. This is like a well running little village. My name is Valley. I'm uh, I'm here to welcome and recruit new people into the town. Recruit? recruit yeah. Appreciate your hospitality. Continue. Recruit as in what, dear? Well, the town always needs some kind of uh, help every now and then, and it's hard getting help all the way up here. But we'd all like to welcome you guys with open arms. If you guys need a place to stay, uh, we could use a helping hand. Now tell me, for each of you, what do you think you guys are good at? Do you guys think that oh dear. you are a lover of nature or hunters? Do you think you're good at cooks or gossip, gossip lovers? Are you guys sorters and organizers? Are you guys major in, do you guys major in religion or do you guys enjoy hospitality? <laughs> I believe I already uh, stated the talents of my trade. I kick people in the teeth and spread the good word about Lathander. Okay. Again, I'm my name is Valley, and you are? I'm Roger. Roger? Nice you, Val. She points off into the distance, and you can see that there's almost like this chapel building with like a large spire at the top of it. You'll find your good company and your, uh, and your needs met down at the abbey please go enjoy yourself doesn't seem to have a sun on that church I need to change that <laughs> just an oversight I'm sure to be sure a great oversight but the statue of Lathender is in there so so just budgetary restraints then. <laughs> Go find yourself warmth and comfort and safety behind the walls of Grimwatch. I am definitely going to make my way to the chapel and check it out. You got it. You see she turns back to the rest of you and asks, So, who's next? Are you nature lovers or hunters? Cooks or gossip lovers? Sorters and organizers? Major into religion? Or do you enjoy hospitality? Gossip lovers, girl, I can tell you so much. I am in. <laughs> uh, she looks at you and kind of giggles a little bit. As you can see, like, she goes to bring her hand up, but she's got this large scar across, like, the outside of her hand as she lifts it up to laugh. Very good. And you are? Name's Todd. Todd, you will enjoy your time out at the tavern. As she points off to the west, you can see that there's a building with a, like a side structure and a chimney, come, like a puff and smoke at the top of it. It's got a few windows boarded up into the top parts, and you can see that there's a good uh, flickering light and uh, a bit of liveliness happening inside of the tavern. Oh yeah, it's time to go clicking with the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be your luck that you'll be the only cock in the hen house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so Todd finds his way out to the tavern. So I'm gonna write down who does what in order here. Abby. Todd. Tavern. Now for the rest of you, what do you say? I just walk up and it's like, my name is Evan. I build, create, destroy as I please. I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy the complicated things that make life simpler. I highly doubt you have anything on that list that will make of any good use of my skills. But... How about uh bed sheets? And I just look at her I wasn't finished, maybe. <laughs> Like <laughs> 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 bitch, I wasn't done talking. <laughs> Bed sheets. <laughs> I was like, I could probably cook for you. Oh, cooking. Okay, so off to the tavern with you as well. I'm sure you'll enjoy the company of your friend there, Todd. Todd, wait your ass up. Oh, God, uh, fine. Okay. <laughs> you can oh, wig bitch for me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay Evan and Todd go off together towards the tavern with two of you remaining she turns back to each of you are you guys nature lovers or hunters cooks or gossip lovers sorters and organizers major into religion or hospitality I don't know I'm what you would call retired. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd like to kind of have something easy to do? <laughs> if possible. How about you'd like to go uh, find find a nice place for you and your friends for the night at the end? Sure. Or I could go hunting. Well, You're like I'm retired, I'll go hunting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> retired, I want to shoot stuff. <laughs> this is what people do in their older years. It's like, oh, I don't have to work anymore. Let me go shoot some animals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, actually, we're going to be having company, and we're also going to be uh, having a large dinner the entire township at the tavern later so um nobody exactly is going out into the forest to go hunting we already have all the provisions we need we're just kind of setting up why would you bring it up yeah you offered hunting to every single no no, one no. Of us. what are what are the things you like, like? the first thing you said what are the things you like nature lovers and hunting you can go into the hut that's totally fine <laughs> You can go to the hut with the survivalists. That's fine. Which, which job has the best hat? The meat. The meat. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks at you. Oh, oh. Um, honestly, uh, there's not much of. You know what you might like. <laughs> you might like sorting and organization. You might like going and finding yourself at the item vendor. <laughs> really? Okay. You just find a hat there. I'll go over with the survivalist then, I guess, and meet everybody else at the tavern later. Okay. So then, not the inn. We're immediately splitting the party up into foreign lands. Yeah. <laughs> Gertie's going to the survivalist camp. We literally just got here. <laughs> Do you know everything I touch is poison, so I don't know how good it's going to go. And then Gromit. <laughs> Is going to the item vendor. Are you sure you don't want to cook then, Gromit? <laughs> Wash your hands. You're like, all right. What good does that do? Uh, in the Discord, <laughs> I think I posted the picture of the town, so yeah. you guys can uh, check that out. So some of you went. So Gertie went to the survivalist camp. Evan and Todd mm. went to the tavern. Uh, Roger went to the abbey. Mm. And Gromit went to the item vendor within town. I'm going to go to the bathroom quick, and I will come back. Oh, what a cute little Abby. Has no son, though, apparently.
Oh god, we're back in Strahd. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Caleb, it looks like you're gonna have the best view of Grimwatch Manor. Hey, that's doubly awesome. <laughs> that means I'm gonna be the first to die. <laughs> Oh, they have a stagecoach. We can steal that. Statue. <laughs> D- didn't even think about, like, buying it or earning it or, you know, <laughs> borrowing it. it. No, no just we're gonna straight steal. steal. <laughs> I'm not going into my Well, tracking. I mean, she <laughs> is hard into that road dip, so, you know. <laughs> I mean fair. <laughs> I'm old, I don't pay for anything. <laughs> you don't have time to live out the consequences of your actions. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, you guys all happy with your choices? Yeah. It is. Hopefully. Bring it on. I mean, the choices. They I think choices. we each chose something. I think the only thing we missed was the blacksmith. Everywhere else, it looks like we're hitting up. There was a blacksmith? Yeah, yeah. out on the east side. Sucks for them. <laughs> <laughs> you decided on cooking, so. Yep. Better than bed sheets? <laughs> so much better than bed sheets. <laughs> Alright, I guess we'll start in order. Roger, you find yourself walking through the township here, and you can see that there's a statue in the center of town. You can see that there's some liveliness going on on either side, where there's an inn, what seems to be some kind of blacksmith, and somebody hammering away on some kind of hard metal and iron. You can see that there's laughter and and cheering happening in an, inside the tavern, where you can smell... Ooh, what exactly is it that you can smell within the inn? There is... Jalapeno puppers. <laughs> we just throw onions on the grill to get people hungry. <laughs> oh, I swear that I have... Nothing else, just onions. They just only the... serve onions. They're not even <laughs> served. Those are just the grill onions to get people hungry. <laughs> Grilling for the sake of grilling, how absolutely American! <laughs> when people smell that, they're like, "Oh, what you grilling?" It's like, "You hungry? What you want?" <laughs> That'd be five dollars. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Carney people will tell you that's what they do. <laughs> you know, it Ooh, I, I found believe it. that too. No, our our doctor serves a lot of carnies. Like, they're like a tight niche cluster of people, and my doctor's like word of mouth serves like every. Like, on their rotation of when they're in Florida, is like so many of them from the Strawberry Festival, which is the reason why I go every year. It's like (laughs) half the trick. You can smell fine herb spices. You can smell the. uh, You can smell fresh chicken, and you can smell searing bits of pork. On, on so a grill is that a KFC with extra? Got it. <laughs> with extra. Look, man, pork is extra. You know, you go to KFC, you got your 11 herbs and spices, you got your chicken. <laughs> Everything else is just extra. That's where you're headed, okay? Whatever. Yeah. Headed straight to KFC. So, Roger, you're headed through, and you can see that you're headed towards this abbey. It's a well-built stone structure that has like this uh, giant open it like a um, like an archered way opening into the front of it. It's got stained glass built into the side of it with depictions and just like like regular uh, religion uh, type stained glass. And as you walk in, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it other than like the multicolored pictures of stained glass i i know what you mean <laughs> it's just the way type. you described it <laughs> 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 religion type it's 
stained, stained glass. <laughs> All I can imagine is it's like in in, in letters it says non denominal <laughs> Christian or non denominal non Christian baby and it's just a picture of a typhling. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's been one of those weeks. Interpret as you wish. And as you enter into <laughs> as you enter into the abbey here, you can see that there's um three people within some kind of dressings that you can tell that actually um inhabit the building, and you can see that there's a few other people here who um who are here either visiting or um asking questions of some of the priests and clerics here uh questions um maybe just just making conversation with them maybe about a religion or having a question about life you can see that there is uh a man a woman and another man i see, I see. so as i look in and and i'm watching these people I'm gonna try and try and like kind of gauge the attitude as I pull out my holy vestments and just start putting them on. <laughs> okay. You can see that there's two statues in here. One's on either side of the room. They're kind of uh, facing inwards, and they're on a bit of a pedestal. You can see is one of Lathander holding up a hand and almost like, uh, almost like trying to bring in daylight. And then you can see that the other side has a woman with long hair and she's in like a, like a, like a brilliant, like a, a brilliant robe. And there's almost two swords coming out of either side of her robes. Ah, uh, Lathander and the mother heretic. Having gotten dressed in my more ple priestly uh, vestibules, okay. uh, I'm, I'm going to toss myself forward and kind of try and, like, inter in in intervene in their conversation without actually saying anything. Just, like, participate by proxy. Okay. You can see that uh, you come into a conversation. Do you want to give me some kind of... Um, I don't know what kind of check you'd make for something like that, but like, you're just kind of, you're you, like, you could either be considered being really rude or you could kind of be like, it's fine. You, you said you got your garments on and stuff like that. So it's all good. I mean, if you want me to be really rude, I could I could do it intimidatingly, and just like puff up to my my full height. No, it's okay. You see that there's a, a man. A cape. You come towards this man that has like this green set of robes on. You can see he's got a bald head, but with line tattoos put into his head. And you can see he's talking with what seems to be like a village person, and he's almost calming them down. And he's just like. Listen, things will be fine. You just stick to what you know, and and there won't be any trouble. The walls are here to keep out all of the evil. And you can and see you know, he's just like reassuring them. And you know, uh, a prayer to Lathander to, to see the next morning couldn't hurt either. As the morning hasn't come for quite a long time, the moon itself will still give us some kind of glimmer and light. We still reach out to our far father, Lathander. Amen. This, uh, the, the individual who looks like they're the townsperson looks kind of confused looking at you, looking back at, like, the priest, nods their head and walks away. Like, follow. This person with the tattoos on his head turns to you. Welcome to the Abbey. My name is Kursen. I make like a slight bow and I'm like, I'm Roger. It's good to see a chapel, God of the Sun, here, even in the darkest times. Of course, so far away. It's, uh... 
it's good to have a place that's home, even if it's so far out of the way. I agree. <laughs> Is there anything that uh, one such humble follower of Lathander could assist with here in the temple? I'm not good for much, not even at my own home, Abby, but I'm a good, strong lad, and I can help in any way that you could use such a body. Much of the town is just preparing for its large, accompanied dinner tonight, out at the tavern. But here, in the Abbey, I don't know if we need somebody strong. We could just use with somebody who could be an aid to these people. Anybody who comes in kind of needing a bit of help, they were just concerned about getting some sleep. They sound, they said it was getting harder and harder to sleep, finding more and more trouble as uh, they were getting worrisome. Something like that in the town's troubles. We're more or less here to help keep the people convinced that things are going to be fine, which they are. We're under Grimwatch. There's many of us, and as long as we all stick together. But maybe go talk to Doodley as he points off to like what seems to be like the head leader of the Abbey. He might have a few things, but... I'll be honest, the town has just been in preparation for this. Very well. I will go see Dooley, and if I see any wandering pilgrims that are in need of any help, I'll offer what little guidance the Thanders offered me. Kirsten kind of puts one hand on his chest and gives you a bow. I return it. Okay. Well, I'm going to go talk to this other guy. Okay. You can see here that this man has uh, another green set of robes on, but it's got stripes of gold within it as well. You can see that he's got like one um, one of those eyepiece glasses in it. He's got like a little monocle. bit of like, a, yeah, a monocle. There we go. You can see that he's got like a bit of a thick curly hair and uh, Dooley turns to you quickly as you uh, come closer. Welcome to the Abbey, on top of Grimwatch. Greetings, and thank you for accepting me in Grimwatch's Abbey. Of course. Uh, your fellow priest had advised that I come see you if you needed any help with any tasks a good strong body could help with. Sure, that, some of... Or any pilgrims. I actually guidance. think there was a, a little bit of a sieging moment a few nights ago. And there's a couple of the boards down on uh, the the outer walls. Maybe they could be struck back up again. You know, a strong, hearty individual just like yourself, as he pats you on the back. Happily, happily. Before I leave, uh, a prayer to Lathander. And uh, the name of your other deity here. I'm not quite familiar with her. He kind of pats you on the back, and he's just like, That's quite all right. She made a visit here. It wasn't didn't feel like that long ago. As he brings you across, and you can see that the the depiction of Lathander's on the one side, and on the other side, goes. This was the god who touched the earth, who gave it all to ant to go and search for the answers that the gods needed. This statue is based for the god of hope and Lumoria. Ah. I'd never seen a depiction of her before. I don't have any back at Sun Chaser's Abbey. Uh, she is in the picture that you guys have at your guys' church. The one that you guys are... Okay. I don't remember having, like, swords coming out of her. Uh, no. You do not. Yeah, yeah. she has uh, two blades here. Just kind of like at the hip. There's one on each side. Gotcha. Okay, I thought it was kind of like 
swords coming out of behind her. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You're talking like she's wearing a sword on each hip. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha. <sighs> So I guess never mind all that, then I would have recognized the other statue. Um, I'm going to agree and uh, offer a quick prayer to Lathander and head out to the wall to, to help fix this, this damage to it. Now, I don't think you'll need a hammer, because you've got that quite sturdy... Is that just a brick that you've got carrying with you, or is that some kind of... Is that some kind of? I hold it up and like, like, like it's just glowing. Is it like a block icy? of ice? Like I'm not understanding. <laughs> no, it, it, it's a brick. It's a blessed brick. This is the stone cold justice. Oh, blessed by an angel. Smooth, ancient. gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, knock the sense out of those who would see uh, unjust things done to the. Knock careful. some sense into those who need it. Precisely, precisely. You can see quickly he hands you this box of nails and a couple planks of wood, and he goes, Well, go on, get right to it. And Roger's <laughs> going to very enthusiastically start working wherever he points it to, helping repairing this wall. Okay. As you head out of the abbey with your uh, new set and task, you go to find some holes or damaged wood within the structure of the town of Grimwatch here and get to work. So now we're going to turn away to the moment where Todd began to talk about the hens and the clucking and the walking around before Evan reaches back to him, telling him to wait up. Todd and Evan, you guys collaborate together and come towards a tavern, a nice wood-built structure with uh, some some windows, like put into the top, put into the upper level. As you guys can see, that there is a well, uh, a well of smells of chicken and pork coming from here, and you can hear the laughter and uh, giggling from the inside of the building. Well, so far, I'm thinking uh, we made the better choice uh, than all of them. I can agree with you more. It smells all great. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever smelled some of this stuff before, but uh, I think I got an idea of what we can do. Uh, I actually want to try my new tool. And then I just pull out my all-purpose tool, which looks like a screwdriver. Okay. And I press a button, and it turns into a whisk, turns into a ladle. <laughs> Turn just it's like spatula, spatula, yeah, yeah, like, with uh, important starboard attachments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, let's go. Let's see how this works. And, uh, I don't know yeah, if these uh, low tech yokels will know what hit them. All right, I'll never see it coming. <laughs> As you guys enter into the tavern here, you can see that there is two of these very long dinner tables with many seats surrounding each of them and plates with forks, knives, spoons, and dishes being placed out in between all of them. It's here that a lot of the aroma and chatter and laughter really starts to hit you. You can see that there's about four or five people out at the bar all cheersing, getting prepared for whatever is coming. You can see that there's a woman who's going around taking orders. You can see that there's a like a plumper man behind the the bar who's serving out drinks. And then on a like a small platform of a stage, you can see an elven man with a tipped hat playing a lute. Connor, are you awake over there? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. He's a little tired over there. Long day. Yeah. Fair. I feel you, man. So, yeah. Okay. As we enter, uh, well, I'd simply approach uh, whoever looks like they're in charge and say, uh, Valley sent me. My name is Evan. 
you can see that the I'm woman hungry. who is over like taking taking orders of some kind comes over to you all. Oh, Valley sent you. And what did she say that your purpose was going to be? My name is Colette. Hi, Colette. Once again, I'm Evan. This is Todd. Todd said he's great with uh, people, and I said I'd give cooking a good shot for you. Oh, very good. A man that's good with people. I'm sure you'll be good with uh, Lane up with our entertaining entertainment. Look at Todd. Like, in, <laughs> do you think you can entertain Todd? Uh, yeah. Of course I can. I can't wait to see this. I... <laughs> <laughs> he lied as easily as he breathed. <laughs> 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 so uh she Colette brings uh Todd over to Lane, uh the entertainer, the elven man with the loot and the tip tat. And Colette looks at you, Evan, and goes, You kinda look a little uh, you got like a bit of armor and stuff on. Uh, I just wonder what kind of skills you have in cooking. Oh well. Uh I you look like you're ready to brace the wilderness, and you kind of yeah. This is all show for uh, getting through the wilderness till I got here. Just give me a moment, and I can uh, take this armor off and uh, get working for you. Oh, very good. Well, this is the owner of the bar. As she points to the the plump man that's behind uh, behind the bar side, that is William. And you can see that he's like he's got he's plump. You can see like there's a bit of like his chest hairs coming out of like his shirt and stuff like that. You can see that he's bald, but he's got some like scruffy facial hair where he's like serving up drinks to people and laughing with them. But uh I guess you're gonna be heading into the back with Butch then. Butch? His yeah. name is Butch. Yeah, the cook. The cook, okay. Cook the name is Butch. Yeah. Gotcha. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing's wrong with that at all. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, I'm aware. Butch is a feed. woman. Butch <laughs> is a woman. Fuck yes! <laughs> I love it even better. Uh, before I do that, though, I do uh, look for a area that's a uh, little secluded, maybe like a room or so. Do I? Do you have like an an area where I can uh, get dressed? We are all dressed just the way you are. I'll give it a shot, sure. All and right. I'll just go at it. And I'm sure that Butch is going to have a great old time with you. Butch is going to do just fine. <laughs> okay. She leads you into like uh, this little wraparound where you can see that there's like this little swinging door. And you can just hear this like great, like big voiced woman slamming some kind of knife like off into a board. Nice. And she's just like, damn it, if my knees, if I could bend over and catch you slimy potatoes. <laughs> Hi, hello. Hi, my name is Evan. As you Are go you, in, uh... you can see that she's almost like the mirror image to the owner, where she's like very plump as well, but she has all her hair. Um, you can see that she's uh, really sweaty from all of these like pots boiling and like this... Uh, other things are like within this like oven contraption and you can see that there was like a potato that was cut in half rolling towards you okay i would just do my best to kind of catch it for her sure as uh as i walk up hi hi my my name is evan are you uh butch oh please god she like takes a towel and wipes wipes her forehead you better be some good help I truly hope so. Uh, I'm here to help. Then you uh, get right in here. What you need? Just show me what show me what to do, and I'll do it for you. Good. So we're going to be serving about thirty people tonight. It's a big okay. thing. So we got the pork over here. We got some chicken cooking over here. We got pork. some potatoes, and then we're serving a side of beans. Potatoes, beans. Pork, chicken, potatoes, beans. Gotcha. Okay. Now what I'm going to need you go to do is I'm going to need you to go run out to the survivalist tent and we're going to go need right. some more chickens. You need more chickens. We need more chickens. More chicken. More chicken. Okay. More chicken. Whole chickens. Whole chickens. 
All right. I got you. I can go get some chickens there for you. She gives you a big uh, slap on the back. And she's just like, good, good help. The last help just ran off. Do you need them uh, alive or dead before I bring them here? Ah, uh, your choice. Either you kill them or I kill them. <laughs> you can see that she begins, like, chopping at a table. Fair. Fair. Uh, okay. Just There's remember, like, if uh, you take their heads, they'll still be squirming. Oh, I bet they do. <laughs> Evan secretly completely didn't know that fact and was like, you... <laughs> But on the outside, it's like, all right, I got you. But you uh, go get your chickens. How many you want? Well, as many as those mighty hands might be able to grab. All right, fair enough. I'll see what I can do. Perfect. See you, lad. <laughs> and I get to it. I look for some chickens. Okay, look you head. All those. You're chickens. heading right back out the tavern and go into the survivalist camp. So yep. Todd, you're here, and uh, you can see that you're going up to a stage where there's a elven man with a tipped hat and a lute. You can see that um, he's like kind of sitting on a bar stool. Mm -hmm. You can see that he's uh, kind of tuning it, getting prepared. Damn, you're tuning your bar stool, sweet. <laughs> 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 I know he's tuning his baby. So I walk up and I say, hey man, what's going on? He goes, what, me? what, did they think sure, they were going to um, send some help for me? I'm a one-man show. One-man show, I mean... <laughs> I'm one man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm one man. <laughs> oh, we got a funny guy. Maybe you'll be, uh... So, uh, what are you here for? My name is Lane. Well, that's pretty lame. I'm Todd. <laughs> that is also lame. <laughs> Good to meet you. <laughs> I shake this man's hand. He knows what's up. He goes to shake your hand, and then he does that, like, Quick sly away. Ha! Oh, you bitch. One man show, I told you. I don't need to shake another man's hand. This hand is for performing and performing only. I mean, yeah. I bet you perform <laughs> real good. I do. Men. I bring in a large audience. Yeah, I bet. Large audience of men. Again, what are you here for? <laughs> 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 this is pure gold. I love it too much. <laughs> like I said, I'm here to help. <laughs> well, good. As uh, you see, he reaches behind him and he brings out an empty glass with a couple of like bits of ice in it. Maybe you could help me and go refill this. Uh, how about no? How about... You're here to help. Yeah, and and he shakes the glass within the in the cup. Okay, and <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do with that. <laughs> he kind of like gives you this eye really quick, and he's just like, "I'm sure you know, you're not a dimwit, are you? Unless you are." <laughs> Look, if I was a dimwit, could I do this? And then I, like, hold my hand out to it, but I don't grab it, right? And then I, like, wait for a second, and I'm like... Motherfucker, do, <laughs> do, do the thing! And then, like, uh, Anthrax, like, picks it up. <laughs> Just out of his hands. Aha! See? See? Oh. I can levitate things with my mind! Oh, no. We got a magician. <laughs> As he, like, puts his hand to his head. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's better than pleasing large crowds of men <laughs> with your hand. <laughs> I please, Senorita, this beautiful uh, instrument of mine. 
Oh wow, you see your own instrument as a woman. That's that's your idea of a woman, huh? That's kind of sad. You're a magician. Yeah, and <laughs> he kind of like turns to the side. Well, I guess you're gonna be the first act because uh, you're gonna need a good follow up. As he begins tuning his uh, lute. Look. <laughs> there is nothing here that you'd be able to follow up, uh, follow up on. Something I'd like you to follow up on as he shakes the drink again. <laughs> oh, so he grabbed it out of the air? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Now, if you, you wouldn't know, just uh, mind levitating this back and go getting a new one. I kind of like look at the air. And I just shake my head. No, no, no. We're, I'm not doing that. <laughs> God, you magicians are really something else. You know what? You better go practice your performance for when Victor gets here. Because uh, uh, he, he goes to uh, string his lute Victor a little bit more. Victor who? The Grim Watches. They are. They are yes. a special company here tonight. Yeah. Well. Okay then. Actually, you know what? No, this is the stage you will be performing on. Please, no liquids or anything weird. Nothing getting <clears throat> spilled on it. Okay. Please have a Look, common understanding sure. that we're both going to need to use it, even though I'm going to follow you up. I'm pretty sure your act already involves plenty of liquids being spilled. <laughs> he looks at you and he just shakes his head. What? <laughs> okay. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I think I have a better act for you to do. No, I have an act, and you're a magician. Yeah, I know, but, you know, your act, okay, you play the lute, it's an instrument, big whoop. I think you could do something way more entertaining. <laughs> I am not you interested in hearing now. from a magician. You should go and tell your best jokes up on stage. I say casting suggestion with my subtle spell. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> there goes my level two spell slot. <laughs> oh dear! It's elves can't be put to sleep, right? They can still be charmed. Actually, maybe. Hold on, that's oh, fuck. They, Wait, I believe, they have advantage on charm. Yeah. Yeah, I think they have advantage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do too. God damn. <laughs> because one's roll a low, damn it, roll low. <laughs> one's a fifteen and I'm... one's a nineteen. Oh dear. Uh, my spell save DC was fifteen. <laughs> oh okay, so he makes it anyways. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you and your. Did you forgot he was an elf? <laughs> Did you just try to just put what? a spell over me? You're not just a magician. You're a con artist. He goes I'm and looks around. He goes and looks around and pats himself. He's just like, "Are you also trying to steal anything out of my pockets?" No. Only oh, that ass. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have anything worth stealing on you, there, homie. That's what a con artist would say. You con artist. What? You're just some filthy magician con artist to come into town. I'll have you know I'm a great and powerful sorcerer, not a <laughs> wizard. <laughs> er, magician. Well, I guess, uh, I guess the audience will be able to tell how great you really are. Oh, I bet. Go on, get your little circus act ready for tonight. You can see that he kind of like dismisses you and just like stops looking or entertain like entertaining the at like the idea of like continuing the conversation with you. Fine, whatever. Go ahead, stretch out your wrist. You're gonna need it for all those men. <laughs> and I'm just gonna walk away with that one. Okay. 
<laughs> and anyway, Colette comes back up to you, and she's just like she pets, puts her hand on your shoulder, all nice, and she goes, "It'll be really nice to have another bit of entertainment here. A magic show would be really cute." Sure, yeah. Magic show. <coughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you'll be on in about an hour, so get ready. She kind of pats you on the shoulder again and walks away. Shit, shit, Anthrax, what do I do? <laughs> Fuck, dead. Motherfucker. And I'm just gonna walk off somewhere mumbling to quote myself. <laughs> Are you going to go outside, or are you going to stay within the tavern? I'm going to stay within the tavern. Okay. Mumbling to myself incoherently. <laughs> it's, here that, it's here that you're mumbling. You see that Evan leaves outside of the tavern and is just gone. Like, uh, hey, Todd, uh, hold on the fort. I'll be right back. I got to go to gotcha. the uh, hunter shack to get some chickens. Okay. Yep, ex exactly. Later. Well, all right then. Shit. And I'm just gonna sit here and try to figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do. <laughs> In real life, Will's like, hmm, if I had to put on a magic show, what the- I, If I had an hour to come up with it, what would I do? I have plenty of spells here. How do I make them weird? <laughs> okay. We are going to cut over then to Gertie. Um, Gertie, you find yourself going to the west side of town. You can see that you pass by the exact same tavern that you see that Evan and Todd both go into. And you pass some kind of like stagecoach looking caravan before going up the side of like a little bit of a like a little bit of a hill there before you see like there's a couple of tents that are all that all have like their own like lanterns on the outside of them as you can see that there's a fire pit in the middle and you go up here and you can see that there's a couple of wolves that like are within each of the tents before you can see a woman with a like a cloak on with a with the hood up over her head sharpening some kind of other blade by the fire uh like a like a dagger blade or like a yeah uh, like, like you, a machete blade yeah like a like a dagger okay and she's like sharpening it with some kind of like tool. Getting ready for dinner. You can see like the the eyes of a female um, half elf look up at you, and it's not before long that you come into the encampment. And about six of these like dire wolves start snarling towards you in her encampment. Um, I've actually got a gun. A <laughs> plus two to animal <laughs> handling is what I was just. Oh, so you want to reach to animal handling? You want to go reach out to one? Uh, not reach out, but just be you know, like, reach hey, buddy. Reach okay. But I'll like, I'll crouch down. I'm not sticking my hand somewhere it doesn't need to be, though. Okay, give me some kind of animal handling check to not that dumb to try to like <laughs> see the behavior of these uh these wolves. See if these are good boys. Okay, that's a 19 plus 2, so that's 21 uh, for me. You can see it's more or less like they're kind of growling, just kind of in an intimidation factor. They're not exactly mm -hmm. coming out of their own tents or anything like that. Mm -hmm. 
I'll grab like a ration from my bag and like take a couple pieces off and like toss it over to them as okay. a gesture of goodwill. Yeah, they start nibbling it. I'm gonna guess that Valley sent you. Oh, you know, I'm I'm not so good with names anymore at my age, but you know, I'm just started wandering around this little town you've got here and saw you seemed all by yourself and preoccupied and Gertie's gonna go sit down on the other side of the fire uh, not like next to her but across from her okay someone who's got two dire wolves in their possession yep. maybe shouldn't be fucked around with too hard yeah you can see like she kind of like pushes her cloak mm -hmm. back uh, off of her head you can see that she's got like this long um like chocolate brown hair that runs off each either side of her shoulders and you can see that she, like with the cloak you can you can tell that there's weaponry like built with within the cloak you can see that she's got a crossbow she's got some daggers and weapons as well but you can see in the 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 like the hut behind her she has many like traps of some kind you look uh you look fixing to to get yourself something anything in particular you're looking for well when you gotta go feed the town sometimes it's not so easy sometimes when these damaged traps don't work the way that they're supposed to like your damaged blacksmith promises they would or your <laughs> chase gets away because some part of the spine just breaks off of the component and the your 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 meal gets away from you you know i've got a friend who's pretty good with his hands he might be better than your your poorly blacksmith here well our blacksmith's the only one that we got he's just a little overworked kind of helping to rebuild with everything anything that needs fixing you don't want to bother him too much it's like such a small town for him to be too overrun though you guys get many attacks in this area it's not just attacks it's getting the coat the stagecoach out it's the abbey who needs any work done me who needs my traps and weaponry rebuilt Taverns with their pots and pans. Any when you say get the stagecoach out, where where are you going? Well, when anybody needs to go anywhere outside of town, well, they'll go all the way to Vox Hollow, right? Oh, well, I can't imagine. I've, you know, I've heard that once you go into Vox Hollow, that they won't let you leave. I can't imagine a lot of people would go in that direction and be able to come back to your village that's strange i've never heard something like that i don't know i've just been wandering around i've heard a lot of stories i haven't heard of this little village tucked away over here though you must have some good stories for me maybe about some things in the woods I saw maybe some statues Oh, the freakish monster is getting solidified. I've watched it happen before. There are did you see what did it? The floating abomination sends some kind of beam towards its foes. <laughs> those who run and those who are too scared get solidified in stone. The is abomination. It just one? One what? this abomination is there one or are you guys surrounded no there was two at the time but um, one one defeated the other oh shit kind of hoping you defeated one i'm not gonna lie i just sat back and watched watched as two rivals of a forestry battled it out it's like watching two goliaths fight each other 
Yeah, but the problem with that is that the stronger one survives and then you're stuck with the stronger one if you don't intervene. At least it's only one and you just stay out of its way. How do you propose to stay out of its way? It doesn't really seem like it's keen on hunting. It's just if it if you happen to run into it or it happens to run into you. Is there a pattern so that way you stay out of its way? I can imagine for a hunter, especially if you're going out and setting traps, that you know this <laughs> land pretty well. But When you don't feel like you're going to be the thing that's hunted and killed, you don't exactly make yourself hidden. This thing isn't that hard to find. You just stay out of its way, stay far away from it. And you'll be fine. Sound like you admire it. Well, having predators of my own, as she looks over at the, the, the dire wolves, you can understand that something like that, that can just live out in its own environment without it seeming like it, it's going to be harmed or killed or hunted it is the prime hunter of its environment what is not to be admired typically prime hunters don't like it when things are in its territory but you said it primarily just doesn't like things that run away from it that's right Things that show and cower more fear are more likely to just be... Well, I've seen it do a couple of things. I've seen it disintegrate somebody. I've seen it zap somebody into the, into the ground. I've seen it turn, pe turn creatures into stone. Pardon me for saying, hun, but we like to call that a fucking problem. It is an abomination. You're right. So the village is just trapped here? No, it just doesn't seem to come out into the clearing. They don't come to us. We don't rightfully go and interact with it. Mm. It's at this moment that uh, Evan begins to intervene and like you walk up uh, the side here and see like a couple of the tents here, Evan. The dire wolves turn and begin to snarl at you. <laughs> Uh, hey, hello. I I believe I have the right place. Oh, hey, hi, Gardy. When did you get here? Oh, you know, I've just been wandering around. Uh, is, this, is this the hunter shack? Did that make it right place? I mean, I tried to follow directions. Well, she certainly got all the tools for it. A uh, hunter's shack? I'm going to guess that Butch sent you. Boom. Yep. Then you know why I'm here? No, I don't. I gave her all the chickens I had. <laughs> well, she doesn't believe you. <laughs> believe what you wish. I'm done with hunting for the night. Well, I'm not. Where are the chickens at? <laughs> she points beyond the gate's wall. Like, you guys don't have, like, a... You just have wild arm. chickens? It's just wild chickens? She looks back at you. Sometimes the wild gets a little too crazy, if you know what I mean. Like, too many chickens? <laughs> like, a little too crazy. Well, I guess you started beating one chicken, and then they all jumped you. <laughs> you are feeling extra sassy <laughs> <laughs> You can see that she rummages behind she rummages behind her and goes We actually keep them all in a coop. Don't get killed. Don't get killed. And tosses you a set of keys. I appreciate that. You have a good one, guys. Well, ladies, take care. That is the bravest I have ever seen that man. <laughs> Ever since he died, he's been acting a lot more <laughs> reckless. 
<laughs> and then like I'm often right. off in the distance as we look around we can hear the large clanging and banging sounds against like the siding of the uh the walls like um the walls of the of the town because you don't have a hammer you have a stone and you can see that Roger here is putting out boards <laughs> with like a like a stone a stone on a rope yeah Ooh. with nails so like there's nails and like a stone hold up hold up just one sec one, one, one sec she turns Can back you to you Gertie name? I'm gonna guess that you came with all of these lively individuals we we happen to arrive in town at the same time. That's true. <laughs> we saw some of the uh, handiwork of your abomination and thought we'd come into town where it might be a bit safer. Well, if you'd like to give your reckless friend who's looking for a death wish some some help. Uh, which one <laughs> <laughs> she points to the she's just like the one walking away with my keys she oh. <laughs> she takes some rope and she also gives you like a couple of like these uh like nets on long sticks but then also gives you like two kind of feet traps he goes please for the love of god use these for the for the chickens for the chickens and if anything else wants some of those chickens i don't think he's oh, thought shit. that far ahead you said they were in a coop <laughs> doesn't mean there's nothing around the coop why would you put the coop in a dangerous area protect the chickens <laughs> 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 Gertie's gonna like slap her knees and be like, come on babies and try to like get the dire wolves to go with her uh, you do so and they do not move a single inch oh you little bastard <laughs> that's cute <laughs> but they are with me and they're gonna stay the night <laughs> but return soon dinner and the grim watches are coming I mean we're sort of holding your keys hostage. I swear to God, if something kills or hurts my friend, I'm gonna swallow those motherfucking keys or hide them somewhere before it kills me next. She goes to sharpen her blade again. She goes, if you swallow them, does that mean I'm gonna have to go in and retrieve them? Bitch, you can try. The wolves kind of look at you. And look back at her really quick with like a side eye. Enjoy yourself. When you see Butch, tell her that this is a, a hunting hut, a survivalist camp, not a shed <laughs> or a shack. I'm not a messenger, defend your own pride, and I'm gonna walk <laughs> away. <laughs> All right. Oh, maximum sass today. <laughs> <laughs> if she's going to try to get in a dick swinging contest with me, I'll compete. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Evan, you get caught up with, with Gertie, who has like this hunting equipment. Gertie, did she kick you out too? <laughs> Apparently, there are things over here other than just chickens. Let's get these chickens and get out of here okay yeah you know i didn't think that far <laughs> <laughs> other things besides chickens now i'm on guard again i thought we were in the walls just grab the chickens she's gonna cover him and like look around while he's getting the chickens oh you yeah. guys had to leave the walls oh the coops outside the walls. <laughs> Weirdos. Yeah, sure. Do we have to like go like to the main gate and like, hey, we're going to the chicken coop? Mm-hmm. Perfect. I will walk to the main gate. 
Okay. Excuse me. And that's uh, where Valley is. Hi, Valley. Uh, we just came in. You saw us, right? You know me. I'm Evan. Yeah. Uh, it... <laughs> it, it figures exactly what I thought. I'm sent back outside because they had... Well, I have to get chickens. Oh, uh, gracious. Are you out to go get the big ones or the small ones? Yes. <laughs> the ones in the least dangerous area. Are you ready for the big ones? How big are we saying big? Oh, bigger than you. Fuck. Than the small ones. <laughs> but are you prepared for the small ones? How what big does are that the small mean? Ones? <laughs> I'm just asking if you guys are all ready. Obviously not. Why, what do you why mean are your answers so cryptic? <laughs> you make this sound as if it's like a fight for my life, but yet you won't give me answers. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that you're well fit. She kind of slaps you on the back a little bit and just like rubs your back a little. She goes, it's just out to the west. The chicken coop's out there. There's a good reason why we don't keep them inside. Out west. Gotcha. Thank you. No problem. The good reason why we don't keep them inside. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> don't worry, Gertie. I mean, it can't be too bad. I mean, if you think about it, they're only chickens. And they're not the don't, bigger ones. God, I can't believe you said they're only <laughs> chickens. We're fucked. <laughs> they are they're only chickens, okay? I mean, they're they're not bigger than me. That's that's <laughs> Mostly See, what I'm worried about. They straight up said that the big chickens were bigger than you. Literally just said that. Well. What's the worst that could happen? Look, I'm, I hate I'm, all of you. I am <laughs> struggling not to freak out over the idea that we're going back outside the gates on our own without our party. But, you know, <laughs> that's fine. Apparently I, it's okay as long as we don't run away from it. It's I guess it's like birds, but you just gotta, like, stand your ground and look big. Is that what they do? They just look big? Birds? <laughs> Some birds? Okay, sure. <laughs> like geese or something? <laughs> no. And then we're gonna cut over to Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And Gromit, you've been instructed by Valley that you're you specifically wanted somewhere with hats, so you're headed towards yeah. like a shat, like a like a tent that's in the center of town, right beside a statue. And you can see that there's a uh, like a lantern hanging within the middle of the tent here, and you can see that uh, it seems to be more of a vendor shop. Hmm. Okay, I'll go in. You can see that there's a woman inside, and you can see that she's kind of got, like, a bunch of this, like, fake jewelry on, and she's kind of got, uh, like, some pins and stuff on her shirt. You can see that she's got some, some kind of, like, fake jewelry within her hair, and she turns, and it kind of, like, all shimmers and jingles together, and she goes, why, oh, hello. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm sitting here to do something. Oh, well, I'm Anna Maria. And who do I have a pleasure on speaking with today? Gromit. Gromit. I don't think I've come across a grung in a very long time, especially out here. Well, aren't you lucky? I sure am. I am lucky today. So, are you? You must be new into the city, into the town. I'm. I'm sure Valley would have sent you. Uh, yeah. He what? said she said this was the place with best hats. Oh, oh, hats! You're interested in hats, my dear. Yes. Um, you can see that she has like a curtain and kind of like pulls one to the side and you can see that there's a row of like head gear. Yeah. <laughs> His <laughs> eyes sparkle. <laughs> Gromit and the great hat heist. <laughs> yeah. 
Somebody get this. Pull up my gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. No. Okay, you can see that. Put the hat to the bag, lady. <laughs> <laughs> You can see that there's a couple of different kinds here where she's just like, we used to do theater at one point and we had a couple of these different kinds, but ever since uh, our old entertainment decided not to do it anymore and we got the new entertainment and song and dance in the tavern, we kind of have put some of these away. Shame. And uh, you can see that there is about six hats. Mm. You can see that one of them is like one of those golf visors. Like one of those ones with the top completely missing. Mm. Mm. You can see there's a bonnet. What the hell? <laughs> you can see that there is a beanie. Mm. Gator grommet. <laughs> yeah. Like a like a tube? Like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, like a tube. <laughs> just like okay. a like a, a baser grommet. Like a knitted yeah. beanie that would hang off the back just a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh like one of those. <laughs> yeah. You can see that there's I'm gonna hate to say this, but uh I looked up the actual name of it. I think it's called a deer stalker hat. It's like what oh, yeah. one of those like one of those, the flaps. One of those like investigators. You hat. Don't they already have one of those? Caulfield hat. I'm gonna look at you. So Oh. Oh god yes. <laughs> 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 It's a Sherlock Holmes hat. That's it. Yeah, the Sherlock's home hat. Yeah. Next is a bucket hat. Just a bucket mm. hat. Yeah, it's like it's just like a cap, and it's got like the brim around it. Oh, it's called a bucket hat. And then the last one is a massive, colorful sombrero. I need these hats. Do any of these look like they would interest you at all? Last three. <laughs> um, sure. So <laughs> you want the, the bucket hat, the deer stalker, and the sombrero hat? Yeah, those are the ones I'd take. Okay. Do you see that she kind of like... <laughs> you can see that she kind of takes them off the shelf here and like hands them each to you and she goes, well, they're going to be about three silver a piece. They are kind of dramatic. Hell yeah, they are. So, <laughs> do I even have that money? Apparently I do. <laughs> Where did I get all this money? Okay. So it's going to cost you nine silver for these hats. Nine silver? Damn mm -hmm. right. Now, now looking, looking at hats, you're not like really interested in the total theater part, right? Like there's the, what? the matching bits to some of the hats. <laughs> I mean, sure. I call myself the master of disguise. <laughs> You can see that she kind of like goes on the other side of her desk and pulls across like a large chest of um, like, you know, like those theater garments that are just like thrown into a chest there. Yeah. And she starts like flinging through them and you can see like there is like the rest of that almost Sherlock Holmes like outfit okay. from like the neck down. You can see that on top of that there is like a like a poncho. That's got like the same colors to match the sombrero. Yep. And then there's also a tank top to go with the bucket hat. 
I gotta look up what that happened. Well, of course I need to get the poncho. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh, that kind of bucket hat. Yeah. Well, that's very 90s. Okay. <laughs> I will take them all. Okay. My she asks power for... grows. <laughs> <laughs> she asks you for uh, about two silver to complete each. So another six silver to complete each uh, each outfit. Okay. <laughs> money spent I give it to yep along with all this inside of here she sells anything from the standard adventuring gear in the guidebook if you'd like anything he needs like huh. four backpacks <laughs> he's gonna, gonna need a bunch couple. of backpacks I will need a backpack for these costumes okay. an extra backpack <laughs> backpack backpack um, <laughs> that's probably expensive you can see that she's got like a couple different ones. There's like those like large hiking ones that kind of just like are really big on your back. You can see that there's like more of a knapsack. You can see that there's one of those like over the shoulder um like large handbags for men. Hmm. Well, you know you know the uh you know you know the um um, um feline vending grandma? I like to what? imagine that's what his backpack looks like. <laughs> I'm trying to find a picture of it now. Feline <laughs> vending massive. grandma? Yep. That's an absolutely <laughs> massive backpack. Dude, Will, what did you find? Milf, what? man, I love frogs. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> no, the, the frog one killed me. Yeah. Like, I, had, I have to fight back every nerve to stop laughing. <laughs> like, like I had to just I had to think of non-funny it... things for like 30 seconds. <laughs> Is that what it says on the bucket hat? <laughs> Man, I love frogs. <laughs> You give it the 180 turnaround, and there is uh, a badge sewn into it. <laughs> and outside of that, outside of all of this, she does sell any starting adventuring gear. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna need a backpack, an extra satchel for all my costumes. <laughs> I would agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you not have like an assistant or something to help you carry all this around? Are you some kind uh, of performer? You said you're a master I'm... of disguise. Yeah, and I uh, play a sick flute too. All right, give me a performance roll. Right. All right, you're one of your first bardic things. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. 14 plus performance. 5. 19. Sounds pretty good. The Legend of Gromit goes on. <laughs> you know? Pretty good for on the fly. You're full yeah. of something different. For being, you know. Like a grung. What? You're full of you're full of this other different charisma you it's like you you've really gone out and found your spirit yeah uh, kill, killing rats does it i guess oh god you have a I rat problem goes right to it oh well, ratlings you know it's, there's <laughs> i don't know ever since i left it just seems to have been killing lots of rats and mercenaries Weird creatures. I killed a cube of like goo once. Oh. And they they never got all over your costumes. No, I wasn't wearing a costume at that time. I don't think. Oh. Different kind of trouble. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, if there's anything you'd like here, uh, help yourself. Uh, 
Like, what kind of bag are you looking for? What would you like for Gromit? I don't know. Like, a big stupid cat bag would be hilarious, but <laughs> just like a satchel, I guess. Okay. Like, shove all the stuff in. Yeah, she'd more or less just give you one. You've bought, like, enough of her enough of her stuff. Nice. She'd kind of give you a bag. <laughs> Like she feel kind of bad to charge you for a bag to carry the shit in. <laughs> hey man, grocery stores do it. Why can't she? But she doesn't. <laughs> I mean, he did walk in there and he's like, I'll take one of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's like, wait, what? Yeah, there... you got it. I want it. At least a copy of it. Yeah. Are you are you here for the dinner party? Uh, is it dinner party? Why, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Grimwatch are coming down from the manor. What? <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, I don't know. I think we're heading there anyway, so this is convenient. I'm just sure. Oh, yeah. Wait, why would you be heading up to to Grimwatch? Are, are you relatives? Sort of. I don't know. You don't have any ties. Um, you don't have any ties with Jasper, his brother, do you? No. No. Oh, no. Who's that? I, mean, I hate that guy. I mean, I hear horrible things from that Fox Hollow place that's just like. Just put it, killing people in arenas. And just <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this is some terrible news to us. Oh, I don't know. He's he's a bad cookie. I hear. Oh, well. Victor is a Victor's a lovely man. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't hurt a frog. Or vaporize person. one. <laughs> or vaporize anyone. Or anything like that. Of course he wouldn't. No. Why would he do that? He only stands <laughs> to defend Grimwatch. Yeah. Yeah. But over at, the, sit- over at the tavern, though, um, do you do some kind of theater? It, it seems like you're some kind of performer. I haven't tried yet. Well, you played an excellent song there, and you've got a load of costumes to go along with it. I'd love to see a full-out performance from somebody somebody so foreign. Somebody who's uh, who's got such a different style and taste. Sure. This lady's too wholesome to survive what is coming. <laughs> I was waiting for her to say colorful. Yeah, colorful. So cultured. <laughs> Listen, if you well, if you head over to the uh, if you head over to the tavern as well, and you talk to Colette and William, maybe they'll let you perform tonight during during dinner's show. Okay, wouldn't that be Would excellent? For it? Do you get paid? Sure, I'm yeah. sure you could convince them that you could get paid for it. All right. Did you, did you come with anybody else? Do you have an assistant or anything? Uh, yeah, I have this little guy who's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my small lawyer with me. <laughs> Double size. He's part of the act. He's pretty good. <laughs> I I'm intrigued. I'll be there. <laughs> okay, you go. She kind of uh, sends you out the door and just tells you that it's just a, it's just the the household to the west. You can you can clearly see it from the opening of the uh, the hut here. I'm gonna put on the sombrero and poncho. Get just up in it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm singer Grunt. Oh, are you also interested in any instruments? She had oh, instruments. you had this the whole time. We had this conversation. I I have lots of stuff here. 
Why does it say that? What do you got? Um, to go with the sombrero, there's obviously maracas. Come on, I could do better than that. Anything else? It's butter, maybe. A, a what? A banjo? Anything? She kind of like looks in the back, and she pulls out like, like one long case and brings it up, and flips it open, and there is a guitar that's like, that's untouched inside of it. Does it say Dear Johnny on it? <laughs> it says MILF on it. <laughs> yes. Well, this is jackpot. <laughs> and then it says, "I am a frog." <laughs> wow, how convenient! And uh, she picks up the guitar and hands it to you. I've never played one of these, but I'm pretty sure it's going to go great. <laughs> I'm sure it will, too. I'm very excited. Oh, practice on the way. It's about 14 feet. I can I can give Will PTSD with just... If you had said, does it say Dear Johnny on it? And you said, oh. yes. <laughs> I can give Will PTSD. Don't you dare. <laughs> Play it again. <laughs> All right, Gromit, you come out with a completely new outfit headed towards the tavern. Yeah. Do you want to give your guitar one good try? Yeah, okay. All right. What kind of guitar is it? <laughs> uh, I'll let your imagination fill that part. What kind of guitar would you like? I don't know. I, I don't know guitars. But... Neither do I. That's the problem. I you you led into that like as if you knew about guitars. I don't know. I thought like a banjo would be good for her. Uh, you, you could have a banjo. That's fine. You want a banjo? Yeah, a banjo is just a four string guitar. Yeah. All right. Give it a performance check on a well tuned mm. banjo. <laughs> Sixteen. Total? Yeah, sixteen total. Eleven you, plus five. For your first hands-on with a banjo, you are killing it. <laughs> As you walk into the tavern, you can see that there's uh, a good amount of liveliness happening within here. And you can see that Todd is sitting at a table by himself kind of like fumbling Just over me. something kind of muttering to himself at this point with obviously mm -hmm. another chair kicked out with nobody in it mm -hmm. and then there's a man on a stage like putting uh, an elven man on a stage with a tipped hat with like a feather in it playing a lute on a bar stool and you can see that there's a couple of people behind the bar hmm who he said. Okay, I told you he'd be the war mouth act for me. <laughs> or is it a different elf? <laughs> no, it's the same one. He's he just got you oh, off so of his is. stage. So <laughs> he is my opening act then. No, he said you're first. He just kicked you off oh, stage. He's already up there. <laughs> oh. Alright, fine. <laughs> I, I sit down beside <laughs> Todd and <sir. laughs> tuning my banjo. <laughs> like, as soon as you sit down, Anthrax is just all like, do you mind, sir? <laughs> er, wait, sorry. Hold up. Hold up. I'm a, I was away from my keyboard. That's kind of what I figured with the, the chair. Do you mind, sir? Oh, God. Sorry. sorry. And he's even gonna like, to skip? He's like, gonna scoot out of the way and just... <laughs> I think you can sit there. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to show that loser what's up. Oh, what'd he do? I'm playing too. You're, you're gonna go up on stage? Yeah, I got a banjo. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 
Well, okay then. I'm just trying to. Well, me and Dad over here, we've got a good plan for uh, upstaging that loser. And it's a good one. <laughs> it's a real good one. <laughs> it's totally good. It's great. Is it? It's a great. What set. are you gonna do? What are you gonna play? I'm gonna pool three whole magic tricks. It's gonna blow their minds. Okay. <laughs> and I <laughs> shoot. Is it is it time? Do I go up yet? No. Do it said it was in? during the dinner. Oh, during the okay, so no, no, we got time. We got time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they kind of look around into the rafters for birds. No, no, barkeep. Like the way that you said that, barkeep. <laughs> barkeep. 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 Nice. Barkeep. Nice sweet Colette. Nice sweet Colette comes back to the table here, and comes over. Oh, Todd. Is this your friend? Did you guys come into town together? Yes. Yes. Oh, fancy I might, that. Want, might not want to touch him directly, but uh, yes, he is a, uh, a pretty good friend, yes. Well, you look rather nice. I do. See, Gromit. <laughs> she thinks you look nice. <laughs> well, of course, I always look nice. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, uh, I, I got a banjo. I like to play. You sure you do. Got a banjo. He's good at it. I think. Are you willing I to be part it. of the act for tonight? Yeah. That would be marvelous. That would be so is it, good. Is anyone special coming tonight? Well, the Grim Watches are coming. Yeah, I heard that. If you heard, you then why, that, if you heard, then why'd you ask? Because I wanted to surprise Todd because he loves scream watches. Oh, so do yeah. we. Yeah, I love the grim watches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Okay. Uh, would you boys fancy a drink? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have ale or red wine. Uh, I don't know, ale, I guess. I don't know. Uh, surprise me. <laughs> so, it's... either one will be fine. <laughs> He'll have an ale. Okay, fine. Okay. I'll take one alcohol ale, please. <laughs> well, do. Uh, Colette kind of, like, scampers off with, like, a, a like a busy in her footsteps, going back to William, and goes explaining... I'm surprised you didn't get carded. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll just have... I'll have whatever. He'll have the ale. Yes, one alcohol, please. It's like, motherfucker, you're getting carded. <laughs> so it's you guys at a table before Colette comes back, and she comes back to you, Gromit, lays down your guys' drinks. She goes, well, for the performance, uh, William said that he's going to offer you 15 silver if you're willing to perform a good performance for Grimwatch. For the, the Grimwatches. Okay. Yeah. I'll pay for all the costumes. That's excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. Cha-ching. Um... Don't worry about the first round of drinks. They're on the house. Double two oh. A whole round on the house. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Very nice. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I'm just gonna. Um, I'm just gonna chug it down. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna need some alcohol in my system for what I'm about to do. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna cut away really quick. Evan and Gertie. You guys have the doors open to um to leave the township here. But it's not long before you hear a chariot run by horses out from the northern part of town. You can hear like a large stagecoach coming down from Grimwatch. You guys can see that it comes right into the center of town and it catches your eye and makes you just like stay put. You see that Valley kind of turns to you guys and goes, well, I guess dinner's starting early. I don't think you guys are going to go catch more chicken in time. People are just going to have to deal with what they got. <laughs> you guys when see the food's that gone, they'll stop eating. You guys see um, there is a beautiful stagecoach in the center of town that gets stopped. As you can see that there's uh, a driver in it that is just a long black cloak with uh, with like uh, the two reins going inside of like the sleeves. And you can see that there's like two full full side steeds of horses. You can see that this thing has uh, plated glass on the side, and uh, it's covered in blue, red, and purple garments on the outside. And it's here that the door, the stagecoach, opens, and a little stairway kind of follows and patters down to the ground. And you can see that there's an elegant, beautiful woman who comes out. You can see that she's got like fair, pale skin, like she's some kind of half elf as well. She comes out in like a long, um, like, uh, like I'll say blue and purple dress. And as she comes all the way out, you can see what comes out of the caravan next seems to be a very young looking Victor Grimwatch. And I think that's where we're going to end the session. Oh, oh man. Well, was, Vic's a vampire. I was really hoping to go find some chickens. <laughs> I was kind of hoping they were going to be abyssal chickens. Those chickens were going to find us. <laughs> <laughs> they probably were abyssal chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys... What do you guys think of this little little town, Grimwatch? Great session. Great little place. Mm -hmm. uh, Another uh, the new new chapter. Sure. Mm -hmm. Everybody's hundred thousand percent dead. These people are about to die. <laughs> <laughs> like right now, these people are it about seems to die. Like right now, Victor regularly comes down there, though. Yeah, yeah. but now we're here. <laughs> and that changes the situation completely. The dynamics have shifted. <laughs> like all these people, they're about to fucking die. <laughs> they all just like welcomed you guys in with no problem. Man, yeah, I they welcomed us, sure, but they immediately put us to work. <laughs> Look, our party is a walking natural disaster. Not yes. for us, for the people and the environment around us. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we I, walk I'm away. just saying. Just Sorry. saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's like everywhere we go, some bad shit seems to go down once we get there. <laughs> and we just got here. What bad has happened? You guys have been doing so much good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know. Where do I, I get, get something? We get to Evan's hometown for the first time, and 
<laughs> yeah, that whole shebang went down. A lot of people died. The bomb goes off. We yep. get to we get to grab its hometown and everybody's dead. <laughs> Mm. We get to Gertie's hometown, and it's under attack by by rats, <laughs> who we totally justifiably kill in self defense. <laughs> then we they were terrorist a rats. Tyrant that's running the town with a new mm -hmm. gun. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> With a new gun, no new yeah, hat. Missing this hat. Yep. We, yeah, I have. We hat. got to the the one military place, like where they're training all these guards <laughs> for the other cities. Connor, is this, is this <laughs> what you've been? To take that too. Yep. <laughs> Connor, is this what you've been busy with? Yeah. You're just making more and more grommets. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? That's detected grommet. <laughs> There's also senior grommet up ahead, and I just made um, the other grommet with the with the bucket bucket hat. I call booty and booty and the blowfish grommet. <laughs> this milf thing though is <laughs> fuck me like <laughs> milf man, I love frogs. <laughs> frogs. <laughs> I ever tell you about my frog collection? <laughs> I just love frogs. I love frogs. But we'll see. Connor. How, we'll see how it, how it all Give goes. Give me a list of all your hats. I need to know really quick. Yeah, what do you got? <laughs> oh. oh no! <laughs> For the act, uh, I think. Um, I Did got. Did you have a top hat? <laughs> No. Damn it! I I have a construction hat, I have a pirate hat, I have a cowboy hat, I got the bucket hat, I got the uh, Kishanka hat, I got <laughs> the detective hat, and I've got the sombrero. <laughs> and I think I had just a crappy old hat before that. Yeah, you got I a see. ball cap, too, that says uh, yeah. the Vipers. Yeah. Oh, right, and the Vipers. Oh, hat. Hat. Forgot about that one. You need a bandana. Yeah, Mm. You need and like there's hoodie and blowfish around it. <laughs> oh my god! What you need next is like the uh, doctor little light on the head kind of thing, is it... whatever it is to make it looks like Doctor Grommet. Oh, you need like yeah. a doctor's outfit with like the stethoscope. <laughs> yeah. Robert went down to Grimlock. She was looking for a slime board steel. <laughs> he he went down to the shop and said, Hi, Pop, you got a lot of hats and I'm looking for a deal. 